I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the multifluid cycle in particular we shall do the analysis of this particular cycle to see the efficiency thermal efficiency and then we shall discuss the second law of this second law analysis of the steam power cycle and while discussing rather while we shall be discussing this particular topic we shall also discuss the necessity of studying this particular aspect in the context of this module. So, if we try to recall in the last class we have talked about the multiple fluid cycle which is also referred as the binary fluid cycle. So, if we try to just uh, before going to see the you know mathematical analysis in terms of the heat added to the cycle and work which is extracted from the cycle essentially these components are needed to calculate the thermal efficiency. Now, just for the recapitulation we have seen that the concept of binary fluid cycle or multiple fluid cycle is coming because of the a few shortcomings of the water which is used as the working substance in the previous cycles. So, for brief recapitulation if we try to recall what are the important qualities of the working substance should have we have discussed. What are those? High critical temperature, low triple point temperature, high heat transfer characteristics, high enthalpy of vaporization and finally, low condenser pressure is not allowed. In addition to this, the working substance should not be corrosive, should not be toxic, should be chemically stable and readily available. So, if you now consider water, so it is very difficult to have all these properties in water at the or during the higher temperature part of the cycle. So, if we try to recall because we cannot change the behavior of water at the high temperature part of the cycle right and this aspect allows us to think of different working substances that means we cannot reject water as the working substance to be used as the working substance, but we can replace water at the high temperature part of the cycle with more suitable fluids. So, the idea is if I write idea is to use binary vapor cycle. So, briefly if we would like to discuss you know. So, water is not used right for the. So, this is not used for the high temperature part of the cycle. So, it is replaced by more suitable fluids like so replaced by more suitable fluids like mercury sodium potassium etcetera okay 
So, this is that means, we cannot reject water completely as the working substance in the steam power cycle rather we cannot use is rather we cannot use water for the high temperature part of the cycle. What we can do we can replace by this because you have seen in the last class. Now, what if we try to recall the uh, that that means, idea is you know. So, you can understand water it will be used again in the low temperature part of the cycle, but for the high temperature part we are using either mercury or sodium or it may be potassium. So, the idea is so you can see basically in the beginning of this class we have discussed that high critical temperature properties like high critical temperature, low triple point temperature, high enthalpy of vaporization, high heat transfer characteristics. So, all these properties water is not having at the high temperature part of the cycle, but the same working substance can be used at the low temperature part of the cycle. That means, different fluids are having different attractive features, but not all of them. That means, our objective should be to use you know both fluids and that means, you know it is because of this reason that means, different fluids though these two different fluids are having different attractive features, but not all of them. So, we shall discuss now that in the high temperature part of the cycle mercury will be having a few attractive features, but water will not have. Similarly, at the low temperature part of the cycle water will be having a few attractive features, but mercury may not have. So, it is because of this reason two different you know uh, vapor cycles operating on you know two working fluids are you know combined together and the concept is binary vapor cycle. So, if we try to write it. So, idea is to use binary vapor cycle. If we go to the next slide, if we try to draw the schematic depiction. Okay. And then So, this is pump I am giving. So, this is a heat exchanger. And this is turbine and this is condenser. Now, this is you can see this is steam water cycle. So, this is the low temperature part of the cycle because we are using water as the working substance as per our previous discussion. And similarly, the high temperature part of the cycle. So, this is turbine and this is connected to right this is connected to electric motor 
mercury turbine connected to motor. So, you are giving the name mercury electric motor. This is also connect the shaft of this turbine is also connected to the shaft of an alternator and that is steam uh, alternator we can give the name. Okay. Now, that is again So, this is pumped to this is pumped back to the boiler which upon receiving heat. So, this is the you know turbine. So, this is say this is true. So, this is one this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. We can give the name, similarly we can give the name this is 5, this is pump 1, this point is 6, this point is 6, this is 7 and this is 8. So, this is basically HG cycle. So, you know that this is the uh, binary vapor cycle idea was to use both fluids we are enjoying the you know attractive features of mercury which are usable at high temperature also we are exploiting the attractive feature of water at the low temperature part of the cycle. So, this is high temperature part. And this is low temperature part. Okay. So, if we try to draw the T s diagram, so this is 5 to 6, this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, this is 8. And if we try to draw the T s diagram for the T s diagram of the high temperature part of the cycle. So, So, this is the case. Okay. Now, this is 1 to 2 pumping process. So, this is this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. So, you try to understand this is the T s diagram in fact, we have discussed this in the previous class. In the last class we had given name that is you know mercury. Uh, so, basically it is steam boiler this heat exchanger is having dual activities. So, you know that this is basically though it is a heat exchanger, but it is acting like a condenser for the HG cycle and it is also acting like a boiler for the steam water cycle. So, the heat lost by mercury is equal to the heat gained by the steam or water not steam water. So, heat lost by the mercury is equal to the heat gained by the water and that is how water is converted into steam and finally, 
uh, it is it is uh, you know allowed to uh, expand isentropically in the turbine and we are getting work output. So, you know that design should be in such a way that eventually steam which should be coming uh, at the exit of this heat exchanger is superheated otherwise the problem associated with you know turbine blade erosion will be there that we have discussed you know extensively when we have discussed about several other cycles. So, now if we go for the discussion and we assume that now in this class our objective should be to should be to analyze essentially to discuss or to calculate the thermal efficiency. So, if we consider that you know uh, m kg of mercury is circulated right per kg of stream generation. So, this is what we are assuming, we are assuming that you know that stream which you know mercury which is circulated the mercury which is pumped by this pump P 2 to the boiler. So, this is Q in and finally, this is Q out. Virtually there is no heat rejection I mean in the uh, high HD cycle, but there is heat rejection, but that heat rejected that rejected heat is gained by the water. So, effectively you know there is high temperature part of the reservoir wherein heat is added and this is the low temperature part of the reservoir wherein heat is rejected. So, if we consider the uh, mass of mercury which is circulated in this cycle is m and that m kg of mercury is circulated because mercury would be converted to mercury vapor in the boiler and then it will go into the turbine for its you know uh, uh, expansion and if we consider that per kg of stream if we need to supply or circulate m kg of mercury that is what we have assumed. Okay. So, now if we go for the analysis, so analysis of the binary fluid cycle. So, you know that heat supplied heat supplied in a G boiler. We are using or this prefix a G to indicate that boiler is associated with the a G cycle. So, this is Q in and that is what we have seen that this amount of heat is added to this mercury cycle and that Q in is equal to m into H H G in or I can give name H G i H G i. This quantity is basically amount of heat this enthalpy supplied per kg of Hg vapor formed in the boiler. So, if we assume that that means, m kg of mercury vapor is produced in the boiler then this is the total amount of heat right Q in and then what is work done? Work done in the Hg cycle equal to 
W A G equal to mass flow rate into specific work done W A G. So, this is again work done per kg of you know Hg in the cycle. because we are assuming m kg of Hg. So, this is the total work done. Next is what is the work done in the stream cycle? I am not, I am not going to write stream water cycle or the stream cycle. So, this is W stream will be equal to W S T. 1 into because we have assumed that for 1 kg of steam generation we need to supply m kg of mercury. So, that is 1 into W S T and this W S T is work done per kg of steam in the steam cycle. So, this is essentially per you know work done per kg of steam in the steam cycle. Okay. So, you know if we write what is the total work done? So, if we go back to the previous you know slide, we are getting work output from the mercury turbine, we are also getting work output from the steam turbine. So, the total work output out, you know total work output we need to calculate first and this total work output we are getting at the cost of this heat input Q in. So, from there we can calculate the overall efficiency or total efficiency of the cycle. So, we can write uh, total work output equal to W total equal to M into W H G plus W S T right. So, overall efficiency so, overall efficiency of the you know binary cycle that is eta overall equal to W total by. So, we can write W total divided by Q in. So, we can write this is m m into by this is because q in that is the expression right. So, this is the work done for the you know binary cycle overall efficiency of the binary cycle. We also can calculate efficiency of the mercury cycle. What is that? You know eta mercury because so this small a small g is used to denote that it is mercury. So, what is eta h g? So, we are supplying you know this is the amount of energy which is added to the cycle and at the cost of that energy we are getting only this much amount of work W H G. So, this is the expression. So, if we give this equation is 1, this equation is 2, right. So, we have calculated efficiency of the mercury cycle. Next objective should be because since we are discussing on the analysis of the binary fluid cycle till now we have discussed till now we have calculated the overall efficiency as well as we have calculated the efficiency of the Hg cycle that is the top cycle topping cycle. So, let me go back to the previous slide 
this cycle is also known as topping cycle. So, this is known as topping cycle and this is known as bottoming cycle. Okay. So, our next next objective should be to look at the processes of the bottoming cycle and from there we should try to calculate the efficiency or thermal efficiency of this cycle. Okay. So, if we go to the next slide then that is efficiency of steam cycle. Try to understand if you would like to calculate efficiency of the steam cycle, we know that what is the work output right that is W S T because 1 kg of steam should be generated. So, what is the input energy for that you know work output. So, that input energy is coming because in this case you can understand there is no you know heat source which is supplied externally rather the you know uh, temperature of the HG vapor after doing certain amount of work in the HG turbine when it is taken it is taken through this heat exchanger and while it is passing you can understand that you have started in even heat transfer course that this is just like you know counter flow heat exchanger. So, two streams are flowing opposite to each other and at the course of rather during the course of their flow uh, you know because of this heat exchange the water which is circulated or pumped to the heat exchange will be heated up and it is designed in such a way that at the exit of the heat exchanger it should be superheated steam. Okay. So, idea is this heat exchanger which is also known as HG condenser and steam boiler. So, this is uh, this is HG condenser for the HG cycle and steam boiler for the steam cycle and what we need to calculate that uh, what is the amount of heat that is added to the water and we have discussed that heat lost by mercury is equal to the heat gain by the steam. So, from there we can calculate the amount of heat added to the steam water cycle. So, if we go to write that. So, I am writing heat lost by mercury vapor is equal to the heat gain by water right. So, if we do like this then we can write m kg and we do not know the enthalpy of water enthalpy of Hg vapor after doing certain amount of work. So, this is H Hg out is equal to H S T because this is 1 right. So, from there we can calc know what is m, m equal to H S T divided by H H G out. Okay. So, what we can write? We can, so this is the expression. So, now the efficiency of mercury cycle, what we had written that is eta H G equal to you know knowing that that this is the loss of energy by the mercury during the cycle and that energy should be gained by the water. So, can't we write the expression of efficiency from the perspective of energy you know balance. So, we know that this is the amount of energy I minus out divided by m a g i. So, basically this is the amount of energy added to the energy cycle, but out of this energy uh, we are going to reject this amount of energy to the water. So, this is the net energy that is used to get the work and that is how the work output from the mercury turbine. So, this is also the expression right. So, we can write it 
see what is this expression? This expression if we look at this equation, so m into h g o is equal to h s t. Why we are doing this? We can write this equal to m h into h g i minus h s t divided by m into h h g i. Why we are doing this? Because you know that we are going to calculate the thermal efficiency of the steam cycle soon. For that, we need to relate this h s t because that is the amount of energy that is added to the steam water cycle per kg of steam generation. So, if we go one step further, we can write this equal to 1 minus 1 upon m h s t divided by 8 a g i. So, this is equation number 3. If we now use the expression of m so, this is equation number 3 a and this is 3 b. So, if we use the expression of m from equation 3, 3 a and if we plug in the expression of m over here, then we can write that you know eta h g equal to 1 minus h s t into m h g comma i and that is 1 minus h s t what is m? m is m is h s t by h h g o. So, I can say this is h s t i because that is the in you know in. So, this is i this is i because so this is the enthalpy of steam at the inlet to the circle right inlet to the cycle. So, you can try to understand. So, basically this H o enthalpy of mercury that is H H g O out is equal to the enthalpy of steam at the inlet to the cycle that is H S T i. So, that is why I am using this you know nomenclature uh, S T i. So, if we plug in the value we can write. So, this is i this is also i. So, this is h s t i by into h h g i by h h g o. So, we can go one step further we can write this is 1 minus h h g o divided by h h g i. So, this is the you know efficiency of the mercury cycle in terms of the enthalpy that we can uh, uh, considered. So, you know from there we can write the thermal efficiency of the steam cycle. So, efficiency of the steam cycle eta s t equal to what is this? Try to understand. So, this is h s t i. So, per kg of steam this is the input energy to the cycle and at the cost of that we are getting work output that is w s t. So, this is the efficiency that you can understand very easily. So, you know work output by the heat input. So, energy output by the energy input right. So, this is the amount of energy added to the steam cycle per kg of steam and we are getting total work output that is 1 into w s t. So, this is we can write w s t divided by h s t i. Okay. So, what is what is you know what is h s t i try to understand h s t i equal to m into h h g o. So, we are trying to express in so, this is m into h h g o and then this is h s t i minus h s t o because if we look at the steam cycle. So, this is h s t i that is the enthalpy per kg of steam which is entering into the cycle or given to the cycle, but there is heat rejection. 
So, per kg of steam amount of feed that must be rejected from the cycle to it must be rejected because we need to run it in a cyclic manner. So, you know that is Q out is nothing but H S T O per kg of steam. So, and that is so enthalpy in minus enthalpy out that is the W S T that that is what we are writing. So, if we you know write it. So, this is the you know efficiency of the steam cycle. So, this fellow is this fellow is the W S T. Okay. So, next objective should be so basically if you try to recall we could quantify the efficiency of the binary vapor cycle, we also could establish the efficiency of the mercury cycle, finally we have established the efficiency of the steam cycle. So, our objective should be to see the contribution rather what fraction of the efficiency rather what fraction of steam cycle efficiency is contributing the total efficiency of the cycle. So, if you would like to do it we, we need to do uh, you know further calculation. So, if we try to write that overall efficiency because we need to know the contribution coming from both mercury cycle and steam cycle towards the overall efficiency is it 60 percent 40 percent is it 50 percent 50 percent or it is 30 percent 70 percent. So, overall efficiency that is eta overall what we had written if we go back to the previous slide that is this is the expression m w h g plus w s t by this. Okay. So, if we write so that is m w h g plus w s t divided by m mark enthalpy of mercury at the inlet. Okay. So, we can write it that is w h g divided by h h g comma i plus w s t divided by m h g comma i. What is this? We try to understand this is efficiency of the mercury cycle because this is the input energy and this is the output work. So, this is basically mercury cycle efficiency, right. So, if we go back to this, I mean you can understand that mercury cycle efficiency is nothing but this. So, equation 2 m into W H G by m into H G i. So, if you you know uh, cancel m from both denominator and numerator, you will be getting W H G by H H G i. Okay. So, if we go to the next slide, so this is N H you know it efficiency of mercury cycle what about this term. So, we can try to write it. So, this is W S T divided by H S T i. Okay. So, H S T i we can write into H S T i divided by M H H G i why you are doing so? So, you know that this is the work output for the input of energy to the steam cycle. So, this is you know efficiency of the steam cycle that is what we had written let us go back to that. So, this is W S T by H S T i. So, to, 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 to you know give this expression in the form of you know stream cycle efficiency and market cycle efficiency you are doing this. What about this m? So, this m is so we can write it that this eta overall equal to eta h g plus eta s t into h s t comma i divided by m h g comma i. Even it is not in the complete you know closed form. So, from here also we cannot we cannot say what would be the contribution uh, by the steam cycle 
towards the to overall efficiency. So, it is not the closed form rather what we need to do we need to again uh, we should try to write this expression in terms of the uh, efficiencies of I mean either steam cycle efficiency or mercury cycle efficiency. What about this term? So, if we look at this particular part. So, if we look at this particular part now what about m? So, we can write this is h s t i divided by m is already we have calculated what is m? m is h s t i by h h o. So, equation 3 a. So, if we write so this is h s t i into h a g o into h a g i. So, if we plug in the value of m from equation 3 a h s t i by h a g o that we are taking in this uh, uh, in the uh, you know here. So, we can write this is nothing but h a g o divided by h a g i. Can you recall now we can write this expression in terms of the efficiencies if it is not the efficiencies at least in terms of you know in terms of efficiency. So, uh, what we can see a uh, few minutes back we have calculated this mathematical exercise. So, we can see the expression of H A G O by H A G I is nothing but 1 minus eta A G. So, if we try to write there, so we can write this is eta A G plus eta S t into 1 minus eta a g. So, this is eta overall. So, this is the final expression of the overall efficiency of the binary cycle and which is now in the closed form by looking at this expression we can at least tell the contribution coming from both the mercury and steam cycle to, to, to towards the overall efficiency of the binary cycle. So, this is basically the analysis part of this binary cycle and it is very easy just uh, the you know things we have discussed from our basic concept. So, now finally, I would like to discuss about the second law analysis. So, this is very important that is second law analysis. See you have studied about second law of thermodynamics in the context of thermodynamics basic thermodynamics course, but now question is why do we need to uh, again uh, discuss this particular aspect in the context of the uh, module of steam power cycle. So, we have discussed about starting from the Carnot cycle to ideal Rankine cycle then Rankine cycle with different modifications, reheat Rankine cycle, regenerative Rankine cycle and finally, binary vapor cycle. So, out of these cycles only the Carnot cycle is the reversible cycle. I mean Carnot cycle all the processes if we try to recall you know uh, two reversible isothermal processes and two reversible adiabatic processes. So, already I had mentioned reversible. So, all processes are reversible. I mean these are reversible both internally as well as externally. So, so long as the processes are reversible whether it is internal reversible or external reversible basically the processes are both internally and externally reversible. There is no need of you know studying this particular uh, uh, topic. So, basically uh, second law is important is vital to understand the degree of irreversibility present in any processes. So, this particular analysis again in the context of steam power cycle is important only to know where the irreversibility is rather sources of irreversibility as well as degree of irreversibility present in any particular process. So, to, to know that we need to study this particular uh, you know uh, aspect. As I was mentioning you know that Carnot cycle is fully reversible cycle, but in addition to this Carnot cycle we have studied about simple ideal Rankine cycle, reheat cycle, 
and we have seen that these cycles are not reversible why because these cycles are internally reversible but these cycles are not externally reversible why let us briefly draw the schematic so this is boiler this is turbine this is pump this is condenser so these are the basic components what we can see that even if we consider the simple Rankine cycle or simple Reed cycle, uh, Reed Rankine cycle or even regenerative cycles, uh, for the regenerative cycles we need to have additional components even for the Reed cycle. But if we consider this simple ideal Rankine cycle, what we can see in this, this is the schematic which is you know uh, uh, used to describe the processes in simple ideal Rankine cycle. You know uh, what we can see all the processes are internally reversible right, but you know what is done over here heat is added from high temperature thermal reservoir to the boiling liquids. So, addition of heat from high temperature thermal reservoir to boiling liquid and finally, if we look at this component. So, heat is rejected from condensing steam to the low temperature reservoir. So, although processes are internally reversible, but these two processes that is addition of heat from high temperature thermal reservoir to boiling liquid and rejection of heat from condensing steam to the low temperature part of the reservoir, these two processes are externally are not reversible externally. So, these are highly irreversible process. So, we cannot call this cycle as the completely reversible cycle, because though the processes are internally reversible, but these two processes that is heat addition to the boiler and heat rejection from the condenser, these two processes are externally irreversible. So, if these two processes are externally irreversible, we cannot call it as a reversible uh, cycle. It is because of this irreversibility, you know, whether it is during heat addition to the boiler or it is during heat rejection from the condenser, some degree of irreversibility will be there. And so long as the irreversibility is there in any process, it will try to distract the available energy. So, this cycle has the potential to do some work, but that potential to do some work will be destroyed because of this irreversibility is present, present uh, during in these two processes. So, it is because of this reason we also need to study the second law analysis. Second law analysis will give us a picture about the you know presence of the irreversibilities, the sources of irreversibilities as well as it will also help us to measure the degree of degree of irreversibility present in any processes. Okay. So, let us quickly do it you know that exergy destruction that term you have studied in thermodynamics what do we mean by that that is resource degradation. Exergy destruction is nothing but the resource degradation that means these two processes like heat transfer from high temperature thermal reservoir to the boiling liquid and heat rejection from condensing steam to the low temperature thermal reservoir these two processes will distract the you know energy at which this cycle will work. So, had these two processes are I mean I mean if we somehow can remove these two processes if we can somehow ensure that that amount of heat should be added to the boiler without inviting any irreversibility. 
if we can ensure that this amount of heat must be rejected from the system to the surroundings without inviting any thermodynamic irreversibility, perhaps the efficiency of the cycle would have been better as compared to the case where these two processes will invite irreversibility and that is the real process. So, that means, these two processes are not allowing the system to operate at the best exergetic efficiency. So, exergetic efficiency will be destroyed only because of the irreversibility is present. So, this exergy destruction is the measure of the deviation of the exergetic efficiency of any particular system. So, exergy destruction x destruction dot is uh, nothing but T naught into S dot gen. So, this is the entropy generation. So, basically you know that these two process will invite or it will these two processes will lead to the generation of entropy and it is because of this entropy generation there will be resource degradation that is the available energy would be degraded and as a result of which exergetic efficiency will be reduced. So, this is the equation probably you have studied in thermodynamics I am not going to derive it. So, if it is, so this is the expression of exergy destruction for a steady flow system. So, this is the exergy destruction for a steady flow system right. Let me discuss about one particular case say if we consider one system and this is the system boundary. So, this is exergy in right I am writing exergy in this is exergy out right and this is basically uh, the system the system will be having exergy of the system plus exergy destruction, dest uh, destruction. So, if we if exergy this is the expression of exergy into the system and this is the expression of exergy out from the system, then we can do this we can write this that you know exergy in equal to change in exergy of the system plus exergy out plus exergy destruction. So, you can understand this exergy in is equal to this exergy in which is added to the system will change the exergy of the system. There will be some amount of exergy destruction plus some amount of exergy that will come out from the system right. So, you know if we have multiple inlet such multiple inlet to the system and multiple exit from the system we have we are giving this. So, no matter some amount of exergy destruction will be there and this exergy destruction will be 0 if the processes or process is reversible ok, but it is greater than 0 for the irreversible processes. That means, for all the irreversible processes this exergy destruction is greater than equal to 0 ok. So, if we try to write it now this is the expression in the context of steam power cycle that is our focus uh, today. Uh, so, basically if we can write that x dot destruction. So, x dot destruction is equal to T naught S dot gen. This T naught is the reference temperature 
So, this is the reference temperature T naught, let me write it. So, this is surroundings and this, this refers to, to reference. Okay. So, what we can write? We can write now this is for the this is for the steady flow system for the rather in the context of steam power cycle say if we consider simple ideal Rankine cycle what we can write T naught. So, that is m dot s out plus q dot out by T this is boundary. out minus m dot s in plus q dot in by t boundary in. So, this is the expression. So, you know that, so this is x ex exergy in plus, so let me write it. So, this is for the, if we consider, so this is basically what we are writing, this is T naught into S dot out minus S dot in. Okay. So, this is for the steady state steady flow processes. Okay, uh, system rather I will write system not process. So, this is system. If we consider that we have we have single inlet, single exit and per unit mass flow mass of the working substance. Okay. So, we can write this exergy destruction equal to T naught S exit minus S inlet plus Q exit by T B boundary exit minus Q in by T boundary in. So, basically you know that heat is added to the system Q in heat is rejected from the system whether heat is rejected or heat is added, it is added or rejected through the system boundary. So, these are the temperature of this boundary through which heat transfer takes place. So, T boundary E that is the boundary temperature at the exit through which heat is rejected, this is the temperature of the boundary at which heat is added to the system. So, now this is for the single inlet, single exit and per unit mass of the working substance if you would like to write this is for a cycle. So, for the cycle because if we try to go back, so this is the cyclic process, it is not that we are focusing only in the boiler, it is not a case that we are focusing only in the turbine. If you would like to focus in the boiler turbine that you have studied, but we are focusing on the cycle. So, if we try to write this expression you can write even for all the individual components, but if you would like to write this for the cycle, then it can be written exergy destruction is equal to T naught into 
q exit by t boundary exit minus q in by t boundary in right so this is the surrounding state surrounding state so now basically if you like to discuss that what we have written so this is for the cycle this expression you can apply for all the components which are there in the cycle what we can see from the final expression so this is the final expression i am making a box over here so this is x dot what we can see from this expression pertaining to this cycle all the processes are getting executed in a cyclic manner some amount of irreversibility is there and that irreversibility will destroy the exergetic efficiency what are the sources of this you know of, of the irreversibility one is you can see that heat rejection that is q exit and another is q in so basically if we we have you know if we can figure out the sources of irreversibility then we also can calculate the degree of irreversibility that is present so pertaining to this cycle as i told you in the beginning that although all the processes are internally reversible but only problem is that addition of heat from high temperature thermal reservoir to the boiling liquid that is this fellow and rejection of heat from condensing steam to the low temperature reservoir that is this fellow so these two factors are responsible to invite some degree of irreversibilities which in turn will reduce the system performance by destroying the exergetic efficiency if you if you supply rather if you apply this equation if you supply certain amount of if i go to the previous slide if you supply certain amount of fit to be you know rejected from the turbine even some degree of irreversibility will be there in practice in real application that is there but the you know we are allowing the turbine surface to be insulated so that loss of energy from the turbine the flowing steam to the surroundings is you know neglected so you can understand if if we apply this equation even for the turbine and for the pump so these two are zero because there is no heat interaction between system and surroundings so this is applied for any module which are there in this steam power cycle but this is se minus si so basically when steam is entering into the turbine and steam is leaving so entropy transport associated with the flow of steam and entropy rejection associated with the flow you know you know uh, steam rejection so if it is so long as the process is cyclic then perhaps the contribution from this term will not be there and that is how we could write the expression of exergy destruction for the cycle is like this and having established this expression we also could identify the sources of irreversibility in the context of steam power cycle you know is the heat addition to the boiler and heat rejection from the condenser so with this i stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class thank you